Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the warrior of the regeneration. Part 2. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. Naruto had finished the weapons master passage. The passage itself had just released a small set of weapons consisting of a fighting dagger, hidden blade, long sword, a staff with a retractable spearhead, a short blade, a weapon that he would never expect a virtual copy of the Sword of the Thunder God, and a pristine set of serrated windmill shuriken. Naruto takes the weapons. Before anything else happens. He hears banging on the main gate from the audio sensor mech near the gate's bell. He soon walks out towards the main gate to see a group of chunin who look ready to do something stupid, along with the civilian counselors. What do you all want from me? Ask a calm but assertive Naruto. We're here to remove your demon taint from the home of the fourth Hokage. Said a fat merchant in a condescending tone. Well guess what this is my inheritance, so if you want me out, you'll have to drag me out dead, said Naruto as many of the civilian council members smirk at this answer. We were hoping you would say that's why we are here, said the leader of the Chunin as he throws a punch at Naruto who catches it. Time to separate the boys from the men said Naruto as he breaks the Chunin's arm, causing him to scream in pain, as Naruto somersault kicks him in the face. The other Chunin attack the blonde. Soon a hardcore no rules brawl happens that ends up with the Chunins in broken states. Now that's that get the funk off my property before I get angry said Naruto showing some anger in his expression causing said council members and Chunin, who are still able to walk run away like whip dogs. Before he could go back in his house Tsum and Hana show up to his home. Atsum sama, Hana chan, how are things? asked Naruto as he looks at the Inuzuka women. Please, Naruto, just call me Tsum. We are doing just fine. We have come to let you know the Battle Wolf has completed his training and is ready for combat. You two should train some more so you can be effective combat partners, said Tsum in assuring tone. Not quite yet, I'm afraid, said an unknown voice. Who's there? said Naruto as he and the Inuzuka duo looks around for the figure. I'm right here, said the voice as it appears to be the White Battle Wolf. You can talk asked a surprised and confused Naruto. Yes I can I was going to test you in combat months back after you saved me from that bear, but I sensed that you were in the middle of training, especially in the warrior regeneration method said the wolf as he looks at Naruto in question. Naruto for the moment is shocked about how the wolf knows of the book he has been training out of. Naruto-kun what is he talking about asked a concerned Hana as she looks at her maid in question. Well you know how I have been improving leaps and bounds. It's due this book a shopkeeper gave me that is essentially the ultimate combat and martial arts training manual. Explained Naruto as Tsum and Hana are shocked at this revelation. The blonde before them had improved drastically all through a book. Well now that's out of the bag. Do you mind telling me your name asked Naruto as he looks at the battle wolf. I am Ryakami, a direct descendant of Raiju said Ryakami as he looks at the blonde in question. Well descendant of Raiju let the test begin said Naruto as he and the wolf move towards the Namikaze Hums training field. Let's go we need to be sure Naruto doesn't get himself killed, said Tsum as Hana nods hoping Naruto doesn't die in the trial by combat, as they shut the compound's gate, not knowing a spy from the civilian council had heard about the book Naruto is using slipping away towards their master. But Naruto. Naruto and Ryakami stand across each other, as Hana and Tsum arrive to see the battle about to begin. Naruto and Ryakami charges at each other in a test of wills. Ryakami swipes and claws at Naruto trying to overwhelm the Uzumaki trying to overwhelm him. Naruto dodges attack sent his way. Naruto returns the favor and lands a somersault kick on the wolf, knocking it back some. The wolf, surprised at the blonde strength, returns the favor by hitting him with a back paw, knocking Naruto down hard. Naruto recovers and resumes the battle. The battle continues as a back and forth battle as both try to overpower one another. Hana and Tsum along with their partners, are surprised at Naruto's endurance and fighting ability to keep up with the literal descendant of Raiju, in a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle as the battle continues for four hours. Naruto and Ryakami are across from each other, panting hard they had been fighting for those four long hours. You're a remarkable fighter Yuzumaki, but it's time to end this battle said Ryakami, as he charges up an energy attack that shoots out of his mouth. Naruto seeing this coming avoids it. Ryakami leaps at the blonde as he dodges and attempts to pin him only to see something unexpected. Naruto maneuvers in the air and catches his paw and throws him to the ground. Before Ryakami could get up, Naruto pins him. Yield said Naruto as he is panting and healing from the battle damage he had just experienced. I yield said Ryakami as he is led up to its feet by the blonde. Incredible Naruto, you are a truly remarkable warrior. Said Ryakami as he looks at the blonde in question. What is in that book? Asked Tsum as she and Hana looks at the blonde in question, as Hana checked Naruto's wounds to see that they are healing faster than they normally would. Well it's not only the techniques of several martial arts, but the knowledge of incredible warriors. 
Right now I am only down to two passages for the method to be complete, I only completed three of the passages. Explain Naruto as Tsum and Hana are surprised at Naruto's progress currently with only three passages completed as they look at Naruto in awe. Well Naruto Uzumaki you have a magnificent journey ahead of you as you are worthy of being my partner. Said the wolf as it bows in respect to the blonde ninja. Thanks Ryakami, said Naruto as he scratched the wolf's ears. But Tsunade. Tsunade is running tests on the girl she now came to know as Natsuki, as she looks at the girl who is looking at her with a cute expression, as many of the nurses have fallen in love with the cute little girl. Sakura has even taught her reading and writing after she discovered that she needs to be a more focused and committed Kanoichi, after how she saw that while Sasuke was a boy of her dream, she is a shinobi first and foremost. She knows Sasuke broke the rules, and she knows the comrades come first before personal attachment. Before Tsunade could say anything to Natsuki, Nico bursts into the room. Tsunade-sama the civilian council has called a meeting said Nico as she looks at the blonde Hokage. But the devil could they want said Tsunade, not wanting to curse in front of the young girl. Thank you Nico. Sakura please watch Natsuki here and be sure she is safe, said Tsunade as she goes toward the council chambers. Back with Naruto. Naruto is walking towards the council chamber having a feeling it's time to reveal what he has been training in. Yamaniko shunshins in front of him and is about to say what she was sent to ask until Naruto interrupts by saying I know as he goes towards the council meeting. Naruto walks towards the council chamber and hears sounds of imminent chaos just inside of the chamber. As he soon walks in, a woman of the civilian council shouts ah, so the demon has come to return what was stolen from the Ichiha clan. Now hand over the book that you have. Naruto what book is she talking about asks Tsunade, as she and the rest of the clan head are curious of the book in question. I believe they are talking about this book said Naruto, as he holds out the warrior regeneration method, showing everyone in the room. So you do have it Anbu take it from him. Said the fat merchant as he looks at the blonde with a greedy smirk. An Anbu member who's on the bribe of the civilian council, tries to until Naruto disables him with a punch to the neck and a backhand, sending the man flying in a spinning motion. Another Anbu tries but this time drawing a sword until Naruto taking out the weapon from the book, slices the arm off of the Anbu member in question. Shocking everyone with the weapon that Naruto has. I believe these two Anbu forgot the chain of command Bachin and the one on the ground driving in pain with what the stump here tried to kill me, instead of taking the book that I have. Said Naruto as he deactivated the weapon in question. So Naruto, what is that book that you have with you asked a curious Choza as he, Inoichi and Shukaku Nara look on with interest. Yes this book your companion Ryakami had talked about asked Tsum as she looked at her blonde son-in-law in question. Well this book is called the Warrior Regeneration Method. It's the ultimate combat and martial arts training manual of mystical origins. That would teach the secrets of not only martial arts, but the warrior ethos behind said martial arts itself. By placing the individual in a spirit walk of the warrior in question after each passage is finished, it would release either a weapon or armor. Like the weapon I have here that is like the sword of the thunder god. Explain Naruto as everyone looks at the blonde in shock. Seeing as how he's literally telling them that a book scratch that a mystical book had allowed Naruto to improve enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the dangerous fighters on the planet. Sasuke inside of the room looks at the Uzumaki and smirks at what he will gain from the book. I demand Sasuke never got to finish as he was punched in his mouth by Naruto. You demand nothing of me, this is a clan matter said Naruto, as many of the people minus Tsunade, Inoichi, Choza, Shikaku, Shibi and Tsum were curious about his statement. What do you mean Naruto? Asked Hiyashi as he started to look at Naruto with an bipitical eye until he realizes what he's talking about. If you have realized it, Hiyashi Dono. I am the son of the fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze, and Kishina Uzumaki revealed Naruto, shocking many of the people in the room. Soon sounds of outrage and denial as the civilian and elder council are shouting at Naruto, denying everything that Naruto claimed, until a wave of killing intent is released upon them. Coming from Naruto himself. The third Hokage kept this a secret not only from you, but from me in hopes I will become a loyal attack dog to the village without me knowing my family he and his bastard student Jiraiya used the promise of training and the Hokage hat to control me. Said Naruto as he looks at the Sanin in question with much hate and resentment. Sasuke not learning self-control and humility says in a smug condescending tone. Big deal, so you're from a clan of weaklings if they are left with a dope like you said Sasuke as he smirks at the blonde's misfortune. The Chiha the very seals that hold your bloodline away is made by my clan the Uzumaki, the seals used by the Hyuga, although a bastardized form of it is from the Uzumaki, the seals that make up our defenses are Uzumaki, the seal that makes up Tsunade, Bachin's hundred healing mark is Uzumaki. The Uzumaki clan has proven itself as an important clan to this village many times over. Why they weren't just skilled in seals they were the masters of seals. 
It took three nations plus some leaks here in this very chamber that reduced the Uzumaki clan. Even then many of the attackers were slaughtered in a brutal defensive that led to the forces of Iwa, Kiri and Kumo to still lick their wounds today. What has your clan done? Stole from other villages possibly from other clans and saying they're the best, but in truth they are nothing you are nothing because at the end of the day without those eyes, you are nothing but a spoiled brat with an ego trying to compensate the lack of any real ninja skill or any real manhood. The only real man was Itachi, you're only his shadow the only good Ichiha was Makoto, not that fool of a father Fugaku. Said Naruto as Sasuke gets angry at this. I am the descendant of an asshole who wanted to get what he wants like a spoiled brat because he wanted to be Hokage. I want to be too, but you don't see me throwing a tantrum like a five-year-old. Your mother raised the real deal, not a clone said Naruto as Sasuke lunges at Naruto, trying to kill him with a kunai for comparing him to his brother. Naruto disables Sasuke with only one fluid motion. See Ichiha I will earn it unlike you who might have been given it through your clan. Because I want to struggle instead of being babied said Naruto as he then knocks out Sasuke. Filthy demon unhand him said the fat merchant as he is hit with killing intent from the boy. Call me that again and I will rip your head off and shit down your throat said Naruto as he looks at the fat merchant who's shaking with fear as he pisses himself. Okay Naruto I believe he gets the point said Tsunade as she looks at her godson. So, this is the book you have been training out of mind if I see it asked Tsunade as Naruto hands it to her. Shibi, Tsunade, Shukaku, Choza, and Inoichi. The five veteran ninjas turns the pages to see that three passages are done, Tsunade tries to turn to the fourth passage but discovers she is unable to. Even with her incredible strength she is unable to budge the pages. Naruto, how many passages have you done so far? Asks Tsunade as she looks at her godson in question. I finished the passages of the Iron Fist and Blue Mongol Wrestler, Masters of Tactical Combat and Weapons Masters. Answered Naruto. What chapter are you on now? Asked a curious Tsum as she and her fellow clan heads wants to know as well. Fighting Spirit answered Naruto as a man in bandages scoffs at the word. Is there something you would like to say Danzo? Asked Tsunade as she looks at the aged Warhick. Ninjas don't need such things as emotions or that delusional garbage about Fighting Spirit said Danzo as Tsunade is about to say something until Naruto beats her to it. The fighting spirit makes a warrior regardless of profession. That useless garbage is what allowed Hiruzen who at the time he had it become the third Hokage in the first place instead of you, garbage that allowed me to face the avatar of the thunder god himself, face the overwhelming warriors of the devil's tower that you and everyone here are scared of when they were teens. Even before me getting this book I defeated the one-tailed Jinchuriki Gara, well your precious Achiha golden boy couldn't, liberated a whole nation from a tyrant who was backed by the hull of the snow village, who were all armored with chakra armor, this same garbage has proven it's not garbage, it's the true values of what a ninja is. That you failed to get. Because at the end of the day a ninja's no machine we are mortal. Said Naruto as he looks Danzo in his eyes, getting the stoic warhek to scowl and grit his teeth internally. The FFT my root force when it was up and running could have could have gotten killed or captured because of how you suppressed their emotions to make them your butt boys. I wonder do you and Orochimaru share notes on being pedophiles or what I don't know or maybe you're afraid of being replaced by someone better someone who doesn't hide in the shadows and be a thief of children or a child murderer. Because from what I have heard they are nothing more than drones to an old bloodthirsty warhek who dreams too much of grandeur and glory for himself instead of the village, said Naruto interrupting Danzo as he is beginning to show a little more emotion than usually at the jab at his sexuality, his ability as a commander and advisor, his identity as a patriot. Everyone in the room on the shinobi side thinks he has some balls. For saying such piss and vinegar. Elsewhere in Konoha. Hana is feeling a sudden urge to have rough romantic sex with Naruto when she sees him. Back to the council room. So Bachin can I leave now? I need to go see what the chapter has to show me for training. Ask Naruto as Tsunade nods and hands the book back to Naruto. Naruto turns to walk out of the room and says. Have a good day all of you. Especially you Jayhawk as Danzo feels like he wants to scream out in outrage. My daughter chose the right man to want to be with thought Hiyashi and Tsum as they look at Naruto leaving. Naruto returns to his home to see a group of Chunin lead by Asuma and Kakashi. What the hell do you two pussies want? Asked Naruto as he looks at the two in question. We want you gone freak, answered Asuma as he looks at the blonde in question. And out of sensei's home. You're a bastard son of an island whore. Said Kakashi as the two look at Naruto who cracks his neck. Here's what's going to happen. You and your orgy of boyfriends are going to get the hell out of here before I beat the crap out of all of you, said Naruto as he then cracks his knuckles. You and what army? Said one of the chunin as Naruto smirks at the question. Ryakami attacks said Naruto as the white battle wolf leaps over the gate and attacks the group of Chunin as Naruto fights both Kakashi and Asuma, where he proceeds to kick their asses up and down the street with what's around him. 
Naruto finally knocks out both of the senseis turn Shunin in question. Go home and lick your wounds, boys. Said Naruto as he turns to enter his home to rest for the night. As the group of Chunins go towards the hospital to mend their pride and injuries. Next day. Naruto is in the dojo of the Namikaze compound. He opens the warrior regeneration method to read the second to last passage of the method. The first illustration is of a man with tanned skin, black hair with face paint, similar to the Inuzuka clan in the pattern of a wolf. Wearing tribal wear of sorts with the symbol of a wolf on the back of his vest. His name is Grey Cloud, but to his friends and enemies he is Night Wolf Warrior Shaman of the Apache people. Spirit Walk of Night Wolf. An inexperienced Grey Cloud can be seen being taught by three elder sages in the ways of combat. The youngest of the elder sages teaches Grey Cloud his people's native fighting techniques with a bow and arrow, tomahawk, knife and gunstock war club. The second youngest teaches Grey Cloud what he knows of the martial arts of Taekwondo, Shuri Ryu Karate, and kickboxing, along with the striking and grappling techniques of their people. The eldest of the sages teaches Grey Cloud how to harness external and internal spiritual energies to boast himself and to arm himself with weapons made out of said energies. Grey Cloud after being taught these skills begins to master them and himself to levels seen and few before him. At the moment Grey Cloud is sitting in front of the elder sages at a bonfire. Grey Cloud you have learned well from our teachings in the ways of combat. But your training is not yet complete as you will first find your animality and conquer your inner demons. Then you will gain the name of many that is came before you among our people. Said the head elder as he and his fellow sages walk over to Grey Cloud as they paint his face with ceremonial face paint. Your Grey Cloud drinks this and go on a spirit walks to find your animality and conquer your inner demons, said the chief elder sage, as Grey Cloud drinks the elixir. Inside the spirit walk of Grey Cloud. Grey Cloud is in the forest that represents the spirit world. Soon revenants of poachers and bandits attack him. Grey Cloud fights them off as best he can but is overwhelmed. I'm to kill this buckskin engine dog said the revenant as he takes out a knife to scalp Grey Cloud. Grey Cloud feeling helpless senses and sees a green ethereal wolf. His wolf is what he is looking for. Grey Cloud calling upon his inner spiritual strength and transforms into a wolf-like man-beast and fights off the revenants ferociously. Causing each one of the attackers to run and cower in fear. I am not a dog I am night wolf said Grey Cloud as he soon awakes from his spirit walk. End of Grey Cloud spirit walk. You are now Night Wolf Grey Cloud Warrior Shaman and Great Spirit's Great Champion in its defense, you will be instrumental in what happens in the future and beyond, said the Head Elder Sage as Grey Cloud take the mantle of Night Wolf. Night Wolf goes on to face various poachers, drug smugglers and pollutants that threaten his people's land and nature. All while he works as his people's historian and preserver in his guise as Grey Cloud. One night, Night Wolf gets visions from the God of Thunder Raiden, who tells of a threat to Earth Realm, and tells him he has been chosen. Night Wolf for his part goes on to become an instrumental part of Earth Realm's defenders. End of Night Wolf Spirit Walk. Naruto proceeds to turn the next page to see a man in a yellow opera mask in a suit with a popped up collar and matching yellow sash that exposes his torso that reveals a symbol of a dragon on his chest and matching yellow Yen Peng shoes. The man's name is Danny Rankai, known to his world as the immortal Iron Fist Warrior of Kunlun. Spirit Walk of Danny Ran the Iron Fist. Danny Ran can be seen drinking at a dive bar. As in the depression Kun Lun had been destroyed by the Phoenix Force he is dealing with the loss of his master Lei Kun the Thunder. Danny is thinking back to his teachings and how they had an impact on his life he thinks back to his journey as Iron Fist. From learning how to use the Iron Fist in the first place, fighting crime, saving lives and facing foes that many would see as suicidal to fight against. On it he's met friends in Carl Lucas known on the streets as Luke Cage, Colleen Wing a lady samurai, Misty Knight, a cyber detective and his lover, Shang Kai, fellow master of Kung Fu, White Tiger, another master of Kun Lun martial arts, and many of the world's finest heroes. He has overcome many struggles that would break even some of the most seasoned soldiers. Before he could get another round of whiskey, he hears gunfire coming outside near the bar. Danny remembers what it means to be a hero because he remembers that when it comes down to it, justice and peace needs an iron fist. He goes out the back way to dress in his fighting gear. Danny dons the mask of the iron fist and leaps into the night. Danny arrives at a scene of a battle between police and men armed with high-tech weapons. Hydra and by the looks of some of the main foot soldiers. Time to rock and roll these jokers thought Danny as he leaps into battle like a fierce screaming eagle. Danny, using the martial arts skills drilled into him by the thunder, starts to manhandle AIM and HYDRA foot soldiers. Danny seeing that more AIM and HYDRA soldiers are coming out of the woodworks to rumble. Soon Danny draws on the weapon he's known to be Iron Fist, channeling his Kai into both of his hands, he leaps into battle even fiercer than before. End of Spirit Walk. 
Naruto for the most part is becoming greatly inspired by Night Wolf and Iron Fist, both warriors who are able to use their inner energies and external energies as weapons and ways similar to warriors of his own, being able to boast their physical fighting abilities. The next page shows a man in red, white and blue armor with a star on his chest, an A on his mask and a circular shield, the man has blonde hair and blue eyes. His name is Steve Rogers also known as Captain America the Sentinel of Liberty. Spirit Walk of the Living Legend. Weeks taking back his mantle from John Walker, Steve commits his time training and relearning from what it truly means to represent the nation not as a government agent, but as a living symbol of American ideals. Right now he is training with Falcon in a boxing ring practicing with his refined defendu skills. Come on Falcon you can do better than this said Steve as he blocks a punch from his sparring partner. So Steve how's being Captain America again asked Falcon as he parries a kick from Steve. Okay I am just thinking about how I should be Captain America, as after the fiasco with Walker, I see how the mantle of being Captain America is too much of a position of a government man and not enough as an individual hero. Answered Steve as he blocks a high kick from Falcon. Just take simple steps and make judgment calls based on the values of America, not the values of some pissant Ivory League general who's doing it to further his or her agenda. Be the hero that represents the ideas of freedom, perseverance and never giving up that you symbolized in World War II answered Falcon, as he is suddenly swept off his feet by a leg sweep from Steve. You're right Sam I should be more of a maverick than a boy scout of the military and government said Steve, as he helps his partner onto his feet. Steve Rogers went on to be more of a maverick hero that shows more of an open-minded view than a dogmatic one John Walker had represented as Captain America. Many of his fights he fights not for the American government, but the ideas of the American way of life the government in a way strays from on many occasions. Its spirit is what he fights for. Spirit walk ends. Naruto turns the last page to see a man whose build makes Jiraiya's look second best in a guy that shows off his well-toned and defined muscle as talk as Captain America. But most of all his face is what shocks him the most about the figure is that he looks just like Naruto. Only with brown hair and violet eyes. His name is Tenma Torikin, the Tiger Kintaro, Japanese Hercules, of karate from the elementals who settled in fire country, further shocking Naruto as he enters the spirit walk of the individual. Spirit walk of the Tiger Kintaro of karate. Naruto instead of just seeing the knowledge and experience of the warrior, sees Tenma's life before his eyes. From Tenma's struggles as a scrawny wee kid to his transformation into the Tiger Kintaro of karate. From his training in the art of Ashihara Kaken karate, gaining superhuman strength on a level above Tsunade. He went on to gain a highly formidable presence in the world of martial arts. He sees his battles against ronin, bandits, hired brutes, ninjas and even his fighting prowess being considered godlike by the immortal Rajinkin the Brute. But what Naruto sees shocks him most of all. Tenma is with a lover woman with blonde hair same as his own holding a baby with the same hair as his. The baby who surprises Naruto the most as he hears Tenma's next words. How is my baby boy Minato doing my darling Sonia? asked Tenma as he looks at Minato who was sleeping in the arms of his darling wife. He's doing so great my darling Kintaro he only misses his papa said Sonia, as Minato looks up at his father in question with happiness reaching to touch him. Naruto is shocked to know he had grandparents living and ones who is the strongest man on earth. Naruto sees how Sonia dies from an assassination attempt on her and Minato. Tenma, filled with grief, had to hide his son in a Konoha orphanage to keep him safe. Tenma had to watch from a distance to see his son grow into a man and one of the Hidden Leaf's powerful warriors. Tenma on the day of the QB's attack had played an instrumental role in the battle, using a massive slingshot to sling himself at the QB, staggering it and making it stubble back. Tenma is then revealed to be the old hermit who had been watching over Naruto himself. Spirit walk end. Naruto is shocked and inspired at what has been revealed to him by the passage, he runs out of his home to search for the old hermit in question. That passage has shown me not only the virtue of my spirit's power, but also commitment of the values of what true patriotic ideals stand for and what it means to know where you come from. Thought Naruto as he goes out to run to find his true grandfather. Elsewhere in the village hidden in the leaves. Anabi Hyuga can be seen walking next to the heir of the Saratobi clan Kanohamaru. Who is having an internal crisis with what his grandfather had done to Naruto and his family. He is think of ways to make it up to him in some way. As he is walking, he sees Naruto running through the village in his search for the old hermit. Naruto for his part notices Konohamaru Hey Konohamaru how's it going ask Naruto who stops and looks at his little brother figure in question. But Naruto ni san how's it going with you? Said Konohamaru as he fidgets a little. Naruto for his part looks at his little brother figure with concern. Oh no are you alright? Asked Naruto as he looks at his friend with concern. It's just that I feel terrible about what my grandfather and uncle did to your childhood. I really want to apologize for their actions said Konohamaru as he looks down in shame. 
Naruto walks up to him and hugs him, surprising the boy in question. It's alright Kono you're not responsible for those bastards ruining my childhood. I don't have it in me to hate you. You didn't know about it at all said Naruto as Konohimaru hugs back tightly around his brother figure. Thanks Naruto ni said Konohimaru as Naruto sets him down. It's good we had this talk Konohimaru said Naruto as he sped away from the young Suratobi who cries tears of joy. Naruto looks from a high point to see the very hermit who happens to be his grandfather. He shuns Shin's right next to Tenma Torokin. Ah Naruto it's glad to see you again said Tenma as he looks at the young Uzumaki in question. It's alright grandfather no need to hide from me, said Naruto as he looks at the old hermit who is shocked by the blonde's knowledge of his relation to him. How do you know about my relation to you asked Tenma as he looks at the blonde in question. We have much to discuss said Naruto as he guides the old man towards his home, who is slowly taking off his disguise of an elderly man. To reveal himself to be a man in his forties with a build of a god. But in truth he's really in his early sixties. Inside of the Namikaze compound. Naruto reveals how he found Tenma by revealing how the spirit walk from the warrior regeneration method had shown him how he discovered his true identity and relations to him. Tenma was shocked and surprised at how Naruto discovered his identity with a said mystical manual in question. So Naruto what now asked Tenma, curious of his grandson in question. Well Jiji I would like you to be in my life more asked Naruto as he looks at his grandfather in question. Tenma thinks about how he was unable to be in the life of his son, sees this as a chance to be in the life of his grandson agrees his request. Good because I would like to learn from you on your take of Ashihara Kaken, I want to learn from the tiger Kintaro of karate asked Naruto determined to learn from the incredible man. Tenma looks at Naruto with a gaze that said one thing are you ready for true hell. Time skip six months later. Naruto has endured hellish training from his grandfather in the art of Ashihara Kaken Karate, learning from the very Kintaro himself, who has made himself the strongest warrior in fire country. Naruto was put through the exercise that developed his mental focus and discipline that allowed for Tenma's transformation from a scrawny run to a war machine of a man. Everything from Tenma's workout had pushed Naruto's strength, speed, and agility to newer levels. Naruto for his part is resting in a hot refreshing bath, after the last day of his workout of military pressing 450 pounds non-stop for 4 hours, practicing night combat without the use of his normal senses, using only his newly developing 6 senses, practicing tummo meditation in a room that is 16 degrees freezing, full contact fighting against Tenma, going all out, and laying on a bed of needles. Inside of the mindscape. QB has been looking around her cage to see that it's drastically improving her living quarters, seeing it turn from a standard prison-style condo to more of a modernized castle-like structure. What the hell is going on here thought QB as she looks around her surroundings. Outside of the mindscape. Naruto is visiting a friendly old bookstore. He's looking for books on the subject of spiritual studies. He finds a book on Senjutsu on its practices of absorbing nature energy and how training in it could amplify the user's physical attributes. The book also says that some summoning clans are able to teach their style of senjutsu to other humans. While also saying it is possible to learn senjutsu alone if a person learns how to sense nature chakra around them and take it into themselves. Naruto also discovers something aside from senjutsu that would be beneficial to his training. An old book titled. The Ways of the Warrior Shamans. The book describes how before the times of the Sage of Six Paths in the lands of ancestors and ancients warrior shamans were able to use their inner energy known as Shakti to fight battles. Describing things Naruto had seen with Night Wolf and Iron Fist. Being able to transform into their animal spirits and channeling their Shakti to strike with extreme superhuman brute force, as well as using Shakti to heal injuries. Naruto also got a geography map to find where the lands of ancestors and ancients are discovering that the land has been marked as a no-go for shinobi due to the lands having a strange energy field that neutralizes the ability to use chakra. He discovers they are past wind and waterfall country. Naruto decided that he need to go to those lands to see what he can learn. He goes to purchase the books for his travels to those lands and heads home for the planned training trip he has in mind. The next day. Tsunade is surprised at Naruto's request for a four-year training trip to complete the warrior regeneration method. Tsunade thinks on the request. Where would this training trip be taking you asked Tsunade as she and Shizune looks at Naruto in question. To the lands of ancestors and ancients, answered Naruto as Tsunade and Shizune are shocked by Naruto's destination. Why the hell are you going to those places? Asked Tsunade in an irate and curious tone. Well, it pertains to my interest with spiritual energy, as well chakra is powerful, I need to understand it on a spiritual standpoint. I read in one of the books I found about how the warrior shamans of their lands used energy similar to ours, but seemingly more versatile. I wanted to see what I can learn from their descendants if there are any left. Explained Naruto as Tsunade looks at him with interest. 
But what about your clan seat Naruto the civilian council would no doubt take advantage of your absence, asks Shizune, as she looks at her blonde brother figure who laughs. Well, Shizune-chan I actually have a plan for that after all I know he would like it. Said Naruto as Shizune and Tsunade look at him with a curious look. Well, Bachan, let's call a meeting said Naruto as he dodges a punch from Tsunade, who grumbles damn gaki with training from a mystical ultimate training manual. Inside of the council chambers. Everyone arrives for an announcement. What is this meeting about Lady Hokage asked the fat merchant who seems like he was in the middle of something. Yes I would like to know this as well asked Danzo as he looks at the busty blonde in question. Well, I would let Naruto explain, said Tsunade as she lets Naruto have the floor. Thank you Bachan. I am heading on a four-year training trip, so I am leaving a temporary stead in my place. Said Naruto as shout and screams can be heard from the civilian side. Ah so the demon is the fat merchant never got to finish as his head explodes with a mess of gore from a metallic ball going through it. Everyone except Naruto is shocked, none more than Tsunade, as they look at the figure who slung the ball at the man, as he slowly walks into the room, everyone sees his cloaked form and wonder who he is. Everyone I would like you to meet my temporary stead my grandfather Tenma Tork in the Kintaro of Karate. Answered Naruto as everyone looks at the man who reveals himself. Many of the people look at the man in shock at his appearance, looking like an older Yan Daimei only with graying brown hair and a build of a supreme warrior emperor. Naruto you're related to the Kintaro of Karate, said Inoichi as who looks at him in shock. Yes answered Naruto. But why does he not have Nami Kazi for a last name asked Shoza. Well, it's because I had to leave Minato as enemies many from other places sought mine and my line's death. So I had to leave my son in the orphanage to keep him safe. I had checked in on him for time to time and watch him grow up. On the day of the QB's attack, I had slung myself at it blindsiding it with a powerful punch that stunned it long enough for my son to sacrifice his life. I had watched Naruto ever since from a distance. I know how the villagers had been trying to beaten and kill him. Not only that, I found out my grandson was treated horribly due to the machinations of several people in the room, said Tenma, as he looks into Danzo, Jiraiya and the civilian side of the council, while leaking killing intent frightening said individuals. So does anyone have any objections to the appointment asked Tenma, as many of the civilian councillors shakes their heads in no gesture. The meeting adjourned, said Tsunade, as she hands Naruto his travel papers. Thanks, Bachin said Naruto as he is hit by Tenma instead of Tsunade. Be polite to your godmother, said Tenma as he locks eyes with Tsunade as she blushes at his gaze. Have a nice day Lady Hokage said Tenma as he walks out with a still dizzy Naruto. I think I am in love thought Tsunade as she looks at the man as he walks out of the building. Elsewhere in Konoha in an underground base. Danzo and his three advisors are sitting in a room surrounded by root guards. What are we to do Danzo? Our plan for the vessel is falling apart said Himura as he looks at his warhawk colleague. Calm yourself Amura Danzo surely has a back plan, don't you Danzo said Kaharu as she looks at the warhawk in question. Yes I do, and I will do what I should have done years ago. Said Danzo as he sends out a squad of root ninja. Soon we will have our weapon, if not we will not have a threat to our plans said Danzo, as he has plans for the village with or without Naruto. The next day. Naruto traveling towards the border of fire and river country with all leaf shinobi alerted of his traveling out of fire country, he is finally able to travel outside of the village. As he's running, he senses 20 unknown chakra signatures ahead of him, sensing they are not friendly. Soon Naruto is attacked by Anbu with blank masks with the northeast on the foreheads of said mask. These ninja warriors Naruto recognizes as Root Anbu. Naruto fights a brutal no-holds-barred battle in the forested area near the border to river country. Naruto with the use of his combat skills and the environment manages to eliminate his attacks in various fashions. Naruto breaks the back of his last pursuer, killing him. Naruto looks around to see many of the attackers dead or dying. He proceeds toward river country to the border guard station. He shows his papers and passes through. Back in Konoha. Tenma is having shogi match against Kamimuro Kagaya, who is in a way being stalemated by the Herculean warrior. As Tsunade, Shizune, Tantan, Shukaku and several trusted Anbu members. So let me get this straight you want to be the retainer of the now renamed Torkin clan, for what reason asked Tenma as he moves to take a piece. I owe Naruto a debt of gratitude and my life for saving me from dying of starvation. While I may have hated him in the past he has caused me to realize that I was brainwashed and conditioned only to be an attack dog. But after hearing about him I started to realize that he and I are alike in how we were treated as individuals, reason Kamimuro as he counters a move made by Tenma. What about you girl what is your reasoning of wanting to be a concubine? Asked Tenma as he counters a move from Kamimuro. I owe the grunt a debt for saving me from that pedo snake and getting me to the hospital. 
Maybe he is thankful of me helping Snake Pito kill the third Hokage. From what I heard about from Big I mean Lady Tsunade here said Tayuya, as she corrected herself not wanting to get the soap surprise again from Tsunade. Then Ma thinks on the situation at large when comes to the two. They could betray him and his grandson. But what he senses from the two he sees no lies. So he makes up his mind. Okay I will allow this, but you two must swear that you will not betray the Torkin clan until your trust can be proved. To that end I invoke the tiger and dragon seal on you both. Should you two betray me and my grandson your bodies will lose the ability to digest food, reproduce and heal, said Tenma as he ran through some hand seals, shocking everyone at the speed he is weaving them, along with the fact he has no shinobi training. Tenma places his hands on both of their shoulders, temporarily branding them with the tiger and dragon seals. It is done I will test you two in test of character and commitment, if you fail the brand stay on until I die or Naruto gains the position from me said Tenma as he looks at the two. Back with Naruto. Naruto is traveling towards wind country when out of nowhere ninjas from Iwa show up and surround Naruto. What the hell do you assholes want said Naruto not wanting to start a battle with the Iwa nins. So the reports are true the Namikaze had an air petty. We have waited for this day, bastard seed, said one Iwa ninja, as he looks at Naruto with bloodlust. Look buddy you know the rules of the treaty Iwa is to have no combat with Kanoha ninjas when they travel, said Naruto calm but assertive. Two of his comrades chuckle until two figures jump in front of Naruto. One was a man in samurai-like ninja armor the other was a girl around Naruto's age with short black hair. And sensei what are you doing the Nami Kazi air is right behind you, why are you standing in our way towards vengeance? Said the Iwa captain. Doki the treaty with Konoha is to be upheld as regardless of your emotions towards the Nami Kazi family. Scolded Han as he looks at the Jonin in question. Yes sir you were lucky Nami Kazi if it wasn't for this treaty, you would kill me heard it before buddy, not that new interrupted Naruto, as he looks toward the two in question. Might I have your names before I leave on my journey? Starting with the lady. Asked Naruto as he looks at the two in question. Um, a gentleman. I am Kuritsuchi, granddaughter of the third Tsuchikage. Asked Kuritsuchi in a tomboyish fashion. I am Han, no last name. So, you're the one who survived Rajinkan and overcame the Devil's Tower. If we ever meet in battle, it would be glorious said Han as the other Iwa ninjas leave toward Iwa, but not before Kuritsuchi gives him an air kiss and leaves. Um, it looks like my reputation precedes me said Naruto as he resumes his travels. Naruto going through the border checkpoint and travels to Suna to resupply. On his way he faces several desert bandits trying to rob him. They never had a chance as Naruto slaughter all of them. At the moment Naruto is walking inside of the hidden village of Suna as he sees kids playing and giggling. The kid soon sees Naruto and looks at him with curiosity. Several of the older girls look at Naruto with hearts in their eyes. As he moves towards his destination while an individual from a distance stalk him from the shadows. Naruto walks finds a rest station to relax for a little, as he makes a list for the supplies he needs. Naruto then goes to get something to eat thinking it's been a while since he has had some ramen. As he walks, he hears a familiar feminine voice calls out his name turning around, he sees Tamari jumping right behind him. Ah hi Tamari how's it going asked Naruto as he looks at the blonde in question. Not much Naruto. I must say you definitely look good. Have you been working out or something asked Tamari as she admires his highly developing physical form. Yeah, pretty much answered Naruto as he and Tamari walk side by side towards a ramen shop. So what brings you here? Asked Tamari, curious about her fellow blonde's appearance in Suna. I am traveling to the lands of ancestors and ancients to train. I have heard legends of warrior shamans who use art similar to the shinobi arts of our nations. I wanted to train in their arts to understand more spiritual based energy, explained Naruto, as Tamari is intrigued by Naruto's explanation. They enter the ramen shop to have a few bowls of ramen together. Tamari talks with Naruto and asks about what rumors from his bingo book entree, where it talks about his battle against Rajinkan and his survival of Devil's Tower. Naruto for the most part just tells her that he had help and do in part of training in a call the warrior regeneration method, a total combat training manual with mystical origins that had shown him knowledge of many fighting forms, techniques, tactics and several warrior ethics of some of the combatants in the passages from other dimensions. Damari for her part is surprised that Naruto's achievement of his feats came from a mystical manual of incredible knowledge on combat and martial arts. Naruto, can I see the manual you have asked Damari, wanting to see the said manual in question. Naruto shows her the manual in question. Damari reads and studies the manual in question and looks at the passages already done by Naruto, seeing many of the combatants in question from the past passages. She looks to read the current passages she hasn't seen, but for some odd reason she's unable to budge the page. Yeah these passages can't be accessed by someone else unless you're on my level of training in the manual. Said Naruto as Tamari looks at him in wonder. So what does this passage pertain to exactly? 
asked Tamari, curious about Naruto's current training passage. Fighting spirit answered Naruto as Tamari lights up at that word. She thinks back to the Chunin exam how she saw Naruto exhibit this aspect about his character through all the exams. Tamari couldn't imagine what this aspect could do to her fellow blonde when it's amplified. Well Tamari, I better be on my way towards the other side of wind country. I need to finish my training. I'll see you in four years. I hope you and your brothers get strong for your people said Naruto, paying for the lunch he had with Tamari as he leaves. Tamari for her part thinks about how her training is lacking something in the way of her own combat skills. As well she is a proficient wind mistress and tactician, she is lacking in a variety of her martial abilities. Maybe Naruto-kun has given me something to do after all. Thought Tamari as she then realized she is starting to have feelings for her fellow blonde. Back in Kanoha. Banada is in a state of outrage that the elders went behind her father's back to set up a marriage contract with a nobleman of flame country. In the next five years she could only hope that Naruto gets back in time. What she doesn't know is that Minato and Kishina predicted this outcome. Back with Naruto. Naruto for the most part is traveling on a train like the train he's seen in Snow Country, but with slightly more advancement. He had neared the border of Wind Country when his chakra went haywire as it soon stopped working properly. Naruto discovered a train station near the border of Wind Country. He starts to enter the land of ancients next to the border of ancestors' country, in search of the arts of the warrior shamans of the lands. I don't know what awaits me, but I hope I can overcome the challenges that lay ahead thought Naruto, as he looks at the terrain to be mountain-like with various patches of foliage and fauna that is alien to him. Naruto is walking in a strange land of mystery and wonder after getting off of the train, he sees several things in the land of ancestors from the people having dress wear similar to what he sees with the cultures of the Blue Mongol wrestler. As he is walking, he sees a group of men surround a woman with tribal-like warrior dress wear, who's guarding a boy of similar dress wear in a secluded area of sorts. Naruto listens in on the conversation and sees that. Give us the boy and you won't be hurt woman too much, said one of the men, as he looks at the woman in question with a lustful gaze as they pull out weapons. Naruto sensing their intent leaps between the men in question. Who the hell are you said one of the men angered by a boy no older than 15. Dust a traveler, said Naruto as the men charged at him. Naruto, despite having no chakra in the land of ancestors, uses his formidable fighting skills to battle the armed men in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The men, while highly trained, are unprepared for the young teen's fighting style. Naruto swiftly defeats the group of men with incredible efficiency. Turning towards the possible mother and son, Naruto asks are you two alright? As he looks at the pair in question. Yes thank you stranger we are fine. Said the woman as the boy steps forward. Where did you learn to fight like that? Asked the boy in question. I learned from my homeland of fire country, said Naruto as he looks at the boy in question. Wait, you're a ninja. But the way you fight is different from what I heard from some friends who travel through the elementals, said the woman curious of the teen in front of her. Well that's because I'm training in a manual that in a way is regenerating my combat skills. Answered Naruto. Though where are my manners? I'm Naruto Uzumaki Torokin introduced Naruto as he bows and looks at the two in question. I'm Sonya, my son is named Temujin, we are from the North Star tribe, answered Sonya as she and her bow in a meeting. Well, it's getting dark I will walk you home whoever these jokers are, they'll probably send more people after you too said Naruto as Sonya, well she would scoff at the help she has to remember she has a 7 year old son to protect. Yes follow me please I will lead you back to my tribe in the wilderness, said Sonya, as Temujin and Naruto follow her. Back in Kanoha. Himimuro and Tayuyu are in a dark room lit with candles around him. Lord Torokin, what is the purpose of this exactly? Asked a curious Kamimro as he looks around in the room in question. Purification of the soul. This room will allow you to enter your mind to confront your inner demons and conquer them. Once this is done the next stage will be purification of the body. Said Tenma as Kamimro nods as Tayuya is confused but nods. Now focus your senses inward into your very being and mind to face your inner darkness. Instructed Tenma as Kamimro and Tayuya does as instructed. Both begin to face their first trail of purification. Back with Naruto. Naruto, Sonya and Temujin travel towards the mountain area of the land of ancestors by foot. Naruto, surprised at the woman moving at near shinobi level speeds, is having a slightly difficult time keeping up. Before he can get any further arrows made of strange energy shoot in front of him landing near his feet. Stop, who are you? Said one of the hidden archers as Naruto looks up calmly. Stop begs he helped me and Temujin in the city said Sonya, as eight figures leap down from the tree. Three of the figures surround Naruto with energy bows and arrows pointing at him. Naruto remains calm, sensing that he is in the territory of these people as a man whose height towers over Naruto with power and strength in his steps. He has tribal wear similar to Sonya and Temujin, only more warrior-like than both with distinctive blue patterns. 
He has black hair and green eyes, and his face has face paint markings, indicative of what Naruto has seen with Night Wolf. He looks at Naruto with a calm, calculating stare. Who are you to escort my wife and son? Asked the man now known as Bex. I am Naruto Uzumaki Torkin. I come from the elemental nations. I have traveled far in search of knowledge to improve my fighting abilities. I had seen your wife and son in trouble from what looks like kidnappers. I stepped in and helped them, I just came to escort them back to your tribe. Answered Naruto as Begs looks at the teen in question. Begs looks at the teen in strange armor and says follow us but hand us your weapons, said Begs as Naruto does as he is told and hands him his weapons. The group walk towards the encampment of the tribe in question. Naruto looks around to see the camp was like the blue Mongol wrestlers with a closer take from Night Wolf's own tribe. Many of the children are playing around but stop to look at Naruto with awe and interest due to his hair being like the sun. Many of the girls around Naruto's age look at Naruto with hearts in their eyes. They are soon met with warriors with similar markings to Begs, only more fearsome looking, with the tallest of the group coming towards Sonya and Temujin. My darling daughter Sonya, who is this boy behind you with sun-kissed blonde hair? Asked a fearsome looking man as he looks at Naruto. This boy saved me from Sahei's men, he say he is a shinobi said Sonya, as her father looks at Naruto in question. Who are you boy asked a man curious of the blonde in his tribe's encampment. I am Naruto Uzumaki Torokin, answered Naruto as he looks at the man in question. The man snaps his fingers and calls for the head sage of his tribe to see if the blonde is telling the truth. The sage seeing chakra coils in the boy's body that is glowing but disabled while in the land is telling the truth. The sage nods in confirmation. So you are the one who saved my daughter and grandson. I must thank you. I am Chief Subatai of the North Star Tribe. You boy are telling the truth. Said Subatai as he looks at the boy in question. You're welcome Chief Subatai. I understand that you would be hesitant with strangers even after an attempted kidnapping of your grandson. Answered Naruto as he looks at the chief with an understand gaze. Well let's go feast on some caught giant boar said Subatai as they walk towards the dining tent. Time skip moments later. Naruto and the rest of the North Star tribe are eating cooked giant boar. Naruto tells them of his life, his role as a Jinchuriki and his purpose in the land of ancestors, he explains that his training requires him to learn more about spiritual energy and its uses from the warrior shamans of the land. Subat I asks why. Naruto explained it's part of the method he has been training and that has been improving his fighting abilities. Subat I looks into the boy's eyes and allows him to train among the group his age on the condition that he shows Temujin what he knows about the shinobi arts. Naruto agrees to the agreement. After the feast Naruto was allowed to stay in the encampment with everyone, as long as he did his part. Time skip one year and six months later. Naruto has been training in the shaman war arts of the North Star tribe, learning how to use Ongen, a polar opposite of chakra, that combines spiritual energy with mental energy in the place of physical energy. Learning how to channel his Ongen in his being to perform feats that he wouldn't be able to do with chakra, such as the imbuement of weapons and weapon constructs on top of physical augmentation through Ongen that grants him incredible levels of speed and agility, while maximizing his strength and endurance to new levels. Temujin had been trained grudgingly by Naruto as per the agreement as Naruto reminded him, he couldn't train him in the use of chakra, but he could train him in the essential skills such as Tajutsu, Kinjutsu, Shurikenjutsu, Bajutsu and battle tactics. Well Temujin complained about it. Naruto reminded him that said skills are important, while his father begs would teach him how to adapt and fight a battle. Naruto teaches Temujin how to outsmart the enemy before a battle and rage war against them. Naruto has grown taller with his whisker marks becoming bolder and more feral. At the moment Naruto is in a meditative state as he starts to tap into his animal spirit. He soon taps into his very soul to find the animal spirit. Inside of the mindscape. Naruto is walking around in a thick ethereal forest. Looking around he begins to hear growls coming from a distance he goes to find out where the growls are coming from. Naruto walking up discovers what's been causing the growling. It is a large silver and blue dire wolf. Naruto walking up to the wolf as it growls at him. Naruto slowly approaching it and looks at it not with fear, but with a look of compassion as he touches the snout of the wolf and slowly begins to calm it. Naruto soon grabs the chains and breaks the wolf's chain with brute force alone. The dire wolf seeing this looks at Naruto and licks his cheek and soon jumps at Naruto taking him out of the mindscape itself. Outside of the mindscape. Naruto wakes up and discovers that he isn't wearing the armor he made, he's wearing armor and gear stylized after the dire wolf itself. He feels different, stronger, even more powerful. As he goes towards the village sees smoke. Naruto, rushing quickly, soon sees the encampment under attack by warriors of a warlord named Sahei. Naruto rushes and joins the battle to defend the North Star tribe. Naruto tears through the mercenaries with newly found fighting skill gained from his training under the tribe's men, he helps turn the tide in the tribe's favor. 
Naruto sees a man in black pants and a tank top approach the area. So you're the one who has taken to living with the savages no matter you will be dead by my hand, and my operations will be on the way said the man in question. So you must be Sahei, this ends today starting with your death. Said Naruto as he and Sahei get into fighting stances and get ready to fight. Both Sahei and Naruto charge at each other in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. Naruto with his trench knives, Sahei with his short sword. Both are trading and parry blade strikes. When Naruto and Sahei disarm each other, they fight barehanded. Sahei for his part was a formidable fighter with his Savage Azura style. However, it was completely useless against Naruto's refined avargin mate form. Naruto ultimately overwhelms Sahei, knocking him out with a brute force style punch. Finish this Naruto said Temujin as he looks at Naruto. I out it too but I will leave him to your people for judgment. Said Naruto as he ties Sahei up and hands him to the warriors of the tribe. Thank you, Naruto, you have done us a great service, one that we can't forget, said Sabatai as he looks at the blonde in his beast spirit armor. Back in the elemental nations in a secret base. The group of figures can be seen in a room. Each one wearing identical cloaks with red clouds. Has there been any sighting of the Nine Tails Jinchuriki asked a figure with purple ring pattern eyes with orange hair. No, he hasn't been sighted. From what our spies reported he left the elementals for the lands of ancestors and ancients, said a man with black green pupil eyes with head covering. So the Brad is in chakraless country eh? I wonder if he's getting stronger. I could use the workout when he gets back said Kissam, as he seems more eager to fight the blonde after hearing his exploits against Rajinkan and surviving the Devil's Tower. Amadadad Itachi. Whatever the Brad has learned he will be sacrificed to Lord Jashin regardless said a man with silver gray hair. Enough what are we to do about the other Jinchuriki in the elementals? Asked a plant-like man in question. We proceed with caution only capture if the opportunity arises itself. Said the orange-haired figure in an authoritative tone as all of them shunchens away while leaving the figure, a woman with light violet hair and hazel eyes, looks at the leader of Akatsuki and the orange mask member. So my pet's vessel is training hard no matter. We will crush him regardless of whatever new strength he will gain, said the orange masked man. I agree Madara. He will know pain regardless. For I am the god of this world said pain as he looks at Madara in agreement. What should be done when he returns asked the woman in question. Well my dear Conan, we will see what kind of power he has learned and find its weakness, said pain as he looks at his oldest friend in question. The woman now known as Conan nods in agreement but deep down in her soul, she is having doubts. And Suna. Damari and her brothers took to training and other martial skills outside of ninjutsu, such as tojutsu and bukajutsu. Tamari for her part is training in Bushin Ryu Tujutsu, a form of Tujutsu that specializes in high mobility with acrobatics, precise attacks and highly defensive grappling skills. Tamari had mastered the art to its finest level. Ara for his part has trained a genin hopeful named Mitsuri in the use of Tanfa. A defensive non-lethal weapon. She had taken to fighting defensively with every movement possible with a Tanfa. Bankuro for his part learned more skills outside of puppetry and more in line with a standard ninja. Damari at the moment is showering, she had just finished a brutal workout consisting of 20 laps, 50 to 150 reps of military presses of 440 pounds, squatting 540 pounds in a repetition of 210 pounds, 140 katas of Bushin Ryu's Kai Lion form. As Tamari gets out of the shower in a wrap towel she thinks to herself I wonder what Naruto Kun is doing, as she thinks about her fellow blonde, she has developed feelings for. In Kanoha. Many of the rookies outside of Sasuke are pushing themselves to new heights with their training as Naruto, after revealing to their parents the nature of the warrior regeneration method, implores their clans back in a renaissance of martial combat and study. Greatly improving their existing knowledge of combat and academics. For each they had study skills centered around the skill sets of their clans. Doji and his clan had great sumo styles ancestral form of Kumiuchi Yuma and battle tactics regarding expansion jutsu. With Shoji studying the butterfly fist on top of his developing skills in Kumiuchi Yuma. Shikamaru and his clan looked into being more oriented in martial tactics and skills than normal, while also looking to incorporating more tactics to round out their lack of physical offense. Shikamaru looked into the studies of shadow style Jukenpo, a style that focuses on precise attacks, full contact close combat and footwork. Ino and her clan went into studying more physical techniques regarding chakra augmentation, thought nowhere near the degree of Tsunade, along with improving their sensory perception skills and. Ino for her part studied a forgotten Yamanaka Kenpo style known as Hikation, Samurai Spirit God, a style that emphasizes mobility and cunning over brute force tactics, with the goal of outfighting the opposition. Fenton for her part studied Takentajutsu with Rock Lee and Niji to keep up with her fellow teammates when the fight became close quarters. 
Rock Lee and Niji improved their skills in close combat by integrating their respective fighting forms into boxing. Anad and Secret was practicing the kickboxing form of Taekwondo. Shino and their clan for their part studied the uses of their bugs in the one vector they never tried before, such as formation of ranged weapons, such as throwing javelins. Shino for his part studied mantis-style kung fu. At the moment Tenma is looking through the papers Minato left that should help with Hinata's predicament. He soon stumbles upon a piece of paper that would change everything for Hinata. Well looks like a certain Hyuga is going to be happy thought Tenma as he walks outside of the home towards the Hyuga compound. Elsewhere in Kanoha. Tsunade is looking at the mission report she has been given by Raiden. She is astonished at the man-beast's high coordination and dexterity in his athleticism, as well as his instinctual ability in combat to outfight the opposition. Raiden had joined the Shinobi Corps as a special warrior for the Leaf when it comes to specialized assault missions. From destroying spy rings to overpower bandit strongholds. Tsunade for her part had gone back into training herself, she went into training in the Shiva form of Tejutsu training in the form to remove the cobwebs out of her own skillset, seeing as her godson figure is seemingly quicker than her. She wasn't the only one Sakura and Shizune had also went into training in the form as well to boost their fighting abilities. At the moment she is think about one particular Torokin in question as she reads the reports. Back with Naruto. Naruto had said his goodbyes to the North Star tribe and had gone on his journey. He travels to the train station towards a city known as Shambhala that is sitting in Ancient's country. At the moment Naruto is looking at the environment. It seems like a stone-like city with imagery of a Garuda, divine dragon, a four-armed deity with blue skin and a snow lion fighting together against a storm of sorts. Naruto is in awe at the imagery as he continues to look on in wonder as he sees something very new, a woman with dragon-like wings flying high near the train. She is wearing a Peking mask with black, red and white coloring. Well, this is new thought Naruto as he waves at the woman still surprised at a winged woman flying next to the train itself. Naruto wonders what he will see in the land of ancients. The train soon stops at the station in Shambhala. Naruto steps off to discover wonder. He sees the city of Shambhala as a city of marvel in terms of expressionism and spirituality, as many people of various faiths walk the streets. The buildings themselves look marvelous, and a harmonious blend of architecture styles he's seen in ancestor country, spring country, fire country and wind country. Naruto walks the streets in search of a master of spiritual martial arts. As he moves, he sees a large street gang attacking an old man. Naruto, about to jump into the fight, looks on in shock as the old man moves with remarkable speed and agility, as he defeats all of his attackers, one after the other, with efficient moves and movements. Several of the gang has some time of armor on they charge at the old man with remarkable agility themselves, only for the old man to channel energy into his hands and feet, showcasing superhuman strength for a man beyond his years. One by one the street gang is brutally overwhelmed by the old man himself. Naruto looks at him in awe at the skill and ability he never had seen, not even in his third Hokage. Naruto walks up to the old man in question. Pardon me old one I am Naruto Uzumaki Torokin, I would like to ask if you would train me in your ways. Said Naruto as he humbly bows to the man in question. I am Damashi, last master of the great Sky Dragon Fist, I would like to know your story young man. It alone will choose my decision said the old man in question as he and Naruto go towards an unknown direction. Naruto and Damashi travel towards a structure on the outskirts of Shambhala. During the walk Naruto reveals origins from the elemental nations and his identity as a Jinchuriki, along with his story so far. Damashi for his part is intrigued and in awe by the blonde story and journey for one to have so much negative experience in a ninja village and have the heart to continue on his career shows true conviction. Damashi opens the gate and turns towards Naruto. From what you have told me. I will teach you the great sky dragon fist. But before I can you will face your inner demon. Said Damashi as Naruto nods in understanding. The next day. Naruto is walking towards a chamber a pool of ethereal-like water and a loin cloth. Naruto before you can train you will have to face your inner demon. Not in the form of the QB, but your very inner darkness itself. You must overcome and absorb it. So, remember these words carefully light may light the darkness, but can be blind by the darkness within, Well, darkness is blinding there is a light inside of it said Damashi as Naruto steps in the pool. As he swims in it, he begins to go into his mindscape. Inside the mindscape. Naruto, ah my light half finally here. Perhaps there's is a god after all because I get to absorb you, said Yomi Naruto as he looks at the blonde in question and takes out a plasma sword of his own with red plasma to it. Naruto takes his own plasma sword out as well. Both charge at each other clashing with one another. Both are fighting to a brutal standstill, neither one is gaining the upper hand. The two Naruto's begin to fight from a distance striking with either wind jutsus, arrows, impact bombs, throwing knives, shuriken and kunai. Light Naruto remembers what Damashi. 
like Naruto stops fighting, blocking and deflecting the projectiles away from him, and moves closer to the dark to Pelginger. Naruto does the one thing that surprises the dark side of the blonde he stops fighting. Ah so you realize I am superior, said Yomi Naruto as he gloats until the light Naruto says something that makes him stop. No within darkness there is light and without it darkness is nothing. You are nothing without light itself, and I am nothing without darkness itself as darkness is inside me, said Light Naruto, as Yomi Naruto tries to strike Light Naruto down, only for his weapon to stop in midair, shocking Yomi Naruto, as Light Naruto is standing still as he starts to glow and transform. Yomi Naruto tries to strike at Light Naruto with everything that he has, but he is unable to hurt him. Soon Yomi Naruto starts to feel a transformation himself, a transformation that sheds the dark opposite appearance and shows a more mature and wiser version of Yomi Naruto. Light Naruto transforms similarly. Both halves of the real Naruto are dressed in inverted versions of his ninja armor. So Yomi now do you see while both of us may want to be in control, we never will be in true control together, after all the real Naruto will need both of us to exist. Said Light Naruto as Yomi Naruto nods both shake hands and shone fuse together to form the real Naruto. Outside of the mindscape. Naruto awakens from his meditation as his body becomes truly vitalized by the fusion of both halves of his light and dark sides. Master Damashi when do we being asked Naruto as he looks at his master who smirks. We just did said Damashi as he and Naruto begin to discuss his training. Back in Konoha inside of the Hyuga clan compound. Enma had shown Hiashi a particular paper pertaining to Naruto and a particular Hyuga heiress. Hiashi had returned from business with a dealer on kimonos. This is outrageous said one of the clan elders as he looks at the man in front of them. I believe those are my words as you elders seem to not know what you are doing, as your clan head had already made a marriage contract with Hinata. One that is stamped by the fire daimyo himself said Tenma as he looks at the elder in question. The Ashi sitting in silence as he contemplates the ramifications of the contract as well he is thankful of the Kintaro of Karate, he is more worried of the elders being too greedy for his own good. Hinata is excited that she has a marriage contract with the man she wants to be with. I actually have a suggestion said Hiashi as everyone looks at the man in question. Well since these contracts are legally binding, why not have a contest when Naruto gets back to decide Hinata's hand in marriage said Hiashi, as everyone looks at him as if he has a third head. Enma thinks ah I see you'll buy Hinata more time to be safe from the clan and that seal that needs to be destroyed. The elders thinking that they could keep the Hyuga line clean. Think similarly the nobleman's son is close with Storm Country's military forces, maybe he can get the seven thunder swords of Storm Temple to kill the blonde in a dual thought one elder as he looks at Tenma in question. Name the challenge said the head elder, curious of his son. The Kumite the nobleman and his country's best fighters against Naruto winner takes all. If he wins Hinata is free to marry him and has two favors of the Hyuga clan that names anything on the winner's terms. Said Hiashi as the elders look at Hiashi in question while internally smirk at the clan head supposed idiocy. What do we get if the nobleman wins asked the head elder. You will get to mark Hinata with the cage bird seal, and the seal itself will stay within the clan another century said Hiashi, as Hinata looks at her father in shock and horror. Hiashi looks at his daughter and winks assuring her safety as she realizes the very high possibly of Naruto winning. You have an agreement. The kumite will happen once the Yuzumaki torque in air returns to Konoha and is well rested. Said the head elder Hyuga as everyone is in full agreement. Tenma senses possible treachery afoot. Oh, one more thing Hinata and Hanabi will stay in the Yuzumaki Torokan compound as to see no interference in the Kumite. Said Tenma as the elders grudgingly agrees as they didn't see the Karate Kintaro's sixth sense coming into play the possible blackmail maneuver. Fine said the head elder grudgingly as they leave the room. Thank you Torokan Sama said Hinata, thankful of her beloved's grandfather. It was no trouble Hinata it's the least I could do said Tenma as Hinata goes and gathers some of her and Hanabi's belongings for the stay in the Namikaze estates. Back with Naruto. Naruto for the last six months had been learning the basics to the Great Sky Dragon Fist with many of the students. Naruto for his parts is getting looks of want from the female students of the class while getting envy from the boys. Naruto learned how to tap into the Kai that is in his body to perform superhuman feats of strength and speed while boosting his endurance. Naruto for his part is excelling in the basics. At the moment Naruto is sightseeing in Shambhala before he goes back to training. This is a beautiful land I will miss this might as well take a picture while I'm here thought Naruto as he gets out a camera and takes pictures of the sights to remember his time in the land of ancients. Naruto goes back to the school to continue his training. Naruto in his thoughts thinks of the challenges he will experience in his journey. Naruto has been advancing in his studies of the Great Sky Dragon Fist for the last two years of his stay in the land of ancients, learning how to channel his Ongan in more manners than what the North Star tribe could show. He learns the acrobatics wordplay it also teaches in conjunction to learning its basic forms drills. 
During these last two years, Naruto begins to understand the benefits of focus to gain the fruits of control. From image training hours on end in the room of darkness fighting against imaginary opponents of greater skill, greater strength, speed, and unpredictability. Naruto for his part learned how to have reliable fluidity and dynamics in combat, whether with his animal spirit state or with his standard state. Naruto with blood and sweat manages to become an extraordinary master of the great sky dragon fist. Mastering its unpredictable and cunning form the White Falcon and doing something that makes the master smile. He retools and refocuses White Falcon to suit his needs as a ninja. Evolving it into not a mere fighting technique but an overall battlefield form of combat. Naruto also learned the state of the fighting mind, understanding how to fight without thought. Naruto at the moment is in his room looking at the warrior regeneration method, with the passage of fighting spirit being completed. It releases two images of red and blue light attaches to Naruto's arm in the process. With the light over the items dissipating. Naruto sees a tattoo of a dragon and a dire wolf running in a circle in opposite directions. Naruto went towards Damashi's room. Ah oh, Naruto, you are leaving us. I am glad that you have learned so much from me. I am honored to help a star rise in the ninja world said Damashi as he bows in respect as Naruto returns the bow in kindness. Thank you master, I will remember my time in this place. Said Naruto as Damashi hands Naruto a small box in question. What is this master? Asked Naruto, curious about the box in question. Well consider this a going away present. Said Damashi as Naruto opens it to see that it's a medallion with the symbol of the thunder dragon of Shambhala's past. Here Naruto I would like you to have this medallion in remembrance for your time in Shambhala. It is said to bring great luck and power. Said. Naruto, humbled by the gesture, takes out one of his father's prize pronged kunai. Here you go master a gift to return the kind gesture. It is one of my father's kunai. It has been used in his legendary technique the flying rage or flying thunder god. It has allowed him to defeat an army of shinobi by himself said Naruto as he hands him the kunai and bows in respect and leaves. The Mashi looks at the item with a smirk, knowing the future of his martial arts is guaranteed by the blonde Jinchuriki himself, as he walks back to his room, smiling at the gift that his successor had left him of his world. Naruto is traveling towards the train station until he sees the same street gang that attacked Amashi. What do you clowns want? Asked Naruto as he look around himself to see he's surrounded. We want some payback on your master foreign dog and we will take it out of you said the gang leader. Alright boys, you can save yourselves from what's going to happen because I'm not Master Damashi. Said Naruto as one eager gang member charges at Naruto from behind, only to have his head cut off by the blonde. The gang is shaking as Naruto looks at them with crimson eyes. The choice is yours. Said Naruto as some of the gang members choose to be smart and run away, the others didn't do so as they proceeded to attack Naruto and be slaughtered in the process. Naruto uses the great sky dragon fist in ways that would make his master proud. As he performs acrobatics and combat techniques that would make Rock Lee and Mike Guy jealous. What are you? Said the now fearful gang leader who's crawling away from Naruto as he stalks towards him with wolf-like instinct. I am a shinobi, said Naruto as he cuts the gang leader's head off, killing him. Naruto proceeds to the train station on a train back towards the land of ancestors. The people in the streets looks at him with looks of respect and gratitude as he goes toward the train station. In Kanoha. The remaining rookie 12 are getting ready for the Chunin exams in Suna, they are each thinking of one particular blonde who's not with them. Hinata for her part has been thinking of what her blonde fiancé who is on his training trip. Naruto I hope you're doing alright thought Hinata as Tayuya is helping her work out. Tayuya seeing this says hey Hinata, if you're free later let's practice when we get Naruto in the bedroom together, this gets Hinata to blush deeply as she curls a 400 pounds barbell. Back with Naruto. Naruto during the ride in a large and spacious private car, looks at the last passage of the book in question. The passage shows a man in armor akin to that of what he saw of the blue Mongol wrestler, but different in many ways. He looked like a fierce warrior king, his eyes are blue with long black hair. The man was once a nomadic warrior who has been a pirate, mercenary, gladiator, slave, adventurer and thief. He would become king by his own hand. His name is Conan of Samaria. Spirit Walk of Conan of Samaria. Naruto sees the life of Conan of Samaria, ranging from his time as a slave to his gladiator days, his proper training to the liberation from slavery, and finding of the Atlantean sword in a burial of sorts. To his battles against Ulsa Doom and his set cult to his loss of his first love to his triumphs. At the moment Conan is traveling towards the city of Rauran. For adventure and gold as a mercenary in its foreign legion. Conan stumbles upon a battle between five robed figures and a lone mild-aged man with nothing but his bare hands. Conan watches from a distance at the battle. The man uses masterful use of technical grappling, dodges, critical strikes and counters that seems like water dancing in the air to the Sumerian who is watching with interest. 
The man soon slew all that attacked him with savage attacks that seemed them either a broken neck, a caved-in chest, broken back or caved-in skull. You can come out Sumerian I know you're here, said the man as Conan surprise jumps down to see the man is blind. Who are you and how do you know I am from Sumeria? Asked a surprised Conan. I am Badu the blind fighting sage. I know how a Sumerian is like yourself when I sense his or her aura, and I must say you are by far the strongest. Said Badu as he senses the Sumerian towering. So what brings you to this place might I ask asked Badu sensing the Sumerian's aura. I seek adventure and gold. With my skills with the sword answered Conan as he looks at the blind man. So your skills with the sword is all you have, but what about your skills with your bare hands, how will they fare asked Badu as he looks at Conan. I have my brute strength and size answered Conan as Badu laughs at him. I have seen many like you Sumerian, and let's just say they don't last for long in this world. Show me what your size and brute strength can do said Badu, as he and Conan engages in a fight to test his claim. Conan thought he could easily defeat the man until he finds himself able to hit the blind man, as he easily dodges and counter-attacked when presented with an opening being knocked down multiple times. Conan seeing that his skill as a fighter is only that of a tavern brawler, as he is knocked down the fifteenth time by Badu. Now that you see your skill in hand-to-hand -hand combat is reduced to that of a lesser trained fighter when compared to a master. Said Badu as Conan thinks about the blind man's words, as well he has been a pit fighter most of his life. All of his fights were more or less battle of brute strength. Then teach me Badu said Conan as Badu smiles at his request. I will teach you Conan the way of Yorwa Yuma, said Badu as Conan nods his head. For the next couple of months Conan taught the art of Yorwa Yuma, a martial art that refines what Conan knows of bare-handed combat, but adds more skills such as pressure points, defensive grappling and close combat techniques, such as knife hands, elbows, knees, joint locks and trapping. Conan mastered Yorwa Yuma boost his combat skills to new levels. At the moment Conan is leading a charge against the forces of the city of Bakui in a brutal siege. Using what he trained to its fullest ability in conjunction with his sword play against many defenders cutting, throwing, punching and overall slaughtering the defender with a juggernaut's drive. Conan is deeply thankful of Badu for his training, as he takes the fight towards more defenders. Spirit Walk End. Naruto turns the next page to see a man with tanned skin, dark brown hair and brown eyes of an athletic build, wearing what seems to be tribal-like dress wear. The page across looks at the man to be the same man only in white clothing akin to that of a warrior monk, but with the tribal-like dress from before. The man's name known to his people is Ratonic Tun also known to other as Connor Kenway. Like Ezio is an assassin. Spirit Walk of Connor Kenway. Naruto seeing Connor's earlier years before him becoming an assassin. He sees Ratonic Tun, Connor, training and learning from warriors of his tribe the Mohawk. Learning barehanded combat, knife spear and tomahawk fighting, along with the use of the bow and fighting tactics. Ratonic Tun, Connor, had excelled in all fighting arts of the Mohawk. Becoming a skilled fighter in his own right. Ratonic Tun at the moment is traveling towards the home of one who will make sense of his path in life, after the Spirit Juno told him to seek the one who bears the symbol of A to teach him. Ratonic Tun is traveling and sees two men walking past him. He sees a large home on a hill. For the next two days the old man known as Achilles refuses to teach him. Ratonic Tun seeing a storm is coming, goes to the barn for shelter so he could try again tomorrow. As he sleeps he hears voices of two men outside of the barn he wakes up to see what looks to be highwaymen. Ratonic Tun walks up behind them. Ah what are you men doing here? Ask a curious Ratonic Tun as the two men turn to him. We're here to see kill the old man and anyone he's with said one bandit as he and his fellow band begin to attack Ratonic Tun. The brawl happens as six more bandits show up to fight. Connor manages to overpower and kill some of the group with his knife and tomahawk until the leader shows up and knocks Connor to the ground. The leader interrogates Ratonic Tun, but doesn't get far as Achilles sneaks up behind the bandit and his subordinate and kills them both. Um boy we have much to discuss said Achilles as he helps Ratonic Tun to his feet as they both walk in the house. For the next several hours Achilles revealed to Connor that the spirit that has sent him to him was a remnant of an ancient civilization of great advancement that has plagued the Assassin's Brotherhood for many centuries. Achilles then reveals to Connor his order and its enemy the Templars. Connor take this in with great interest and intent. Achilles shows him his garb for the future. The master assassin begins to train Connor in the ways of the assassin's order for the next several years. Connor is educated in the combat skills of the assassins. Gradually improving his already excellent combat skills during this time. Achilles had also given him education in academics such as mathematics, science, reading, writing and languages. Connor's mind for strategy had also taken to the improvement of the education as he is now able to think not only creatively, but with adaptability and versatility in mind. At the moment Connor is being educated on what to look for in Templar plans in the area of influence and fair he's seeing what to look for in his role as an assassin. 
Soon though Achilles enters the room. Connor there is a group of bandits hiding out in the forest outside of the homestead's perimeter. Revealed Achilles as Connor gets his equipment to go towards the area of the bandits. Connor, seeing one bandit along grabs him and holds a knife to his throat. Make any noise and I'll open your throat said Connor in his assassin's garb. Where are the rest of the group? Said Connor as he stabs the bandit's leg making sure he understood his situation. Ah they're in the camp ahead said the bandit as he then got his throat slit. Connor, using the trees, goes towards the area of the bandits. He soon looks over the area of the forest to see a massive camp with sentry towers. Connor begins to go to work. Taking out the sentries with his bow. He soon takes out a bandit patrolman using the rope dart to hang him. He goes on the attack air assassinating two guards getting everyone's attention. Connor engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's a brutal battle with Connor's unique fighting style. Disabling and killing the swordsman in a matter of moments. Killing the bruisers of the group barehanded. He takes out his knife and tomahawk and cuts through the other close combat fighters of the group. Connor sees the gunman of the group take aim at him using one of the scouts as a human shield he kills leaps, draws his dual French coat pistols and guns down the four gunmen. Soon Connor is fighting the leader and the last man standing. The man was an expert if not master of the sword easily blocking and parrying strikes from Connor. Connor, seeing the man's skill, uses his tactical mind and switches up his attacks, chaining them up to control the bandit's centerline, and soon bypassing his guard and killing the man with a tomahawk strike that splits his skull open. Connor moves on to destroy the camp to erase any signs of it being there. Spirit Walk End. Naruto turns the page to see a man with long white hair. He's wearing robes indicative of a monk, but also a hermit. The man towers over Jiraiya with a build of a great divine warrior emperor, he is Drago's the great grappler of drachma, a great wrestler and seemingly superhuman combatant of legendary standards. But before he did he was a run-of-the-mill brawler who fought for survival on the street with his great strength and endurance for a living. Spirit Walk of Drago's the great grappler. The 14-year-old Drago's can be seen walking down the streets of Pelios. He had just endured a brawl with two men who wanted to kill him. But with some injuries to his person such as being stabbed in his calf and tricep. He is walking to a healer after managing to bet the man to death with his bare hands. Soon a beautiful girl with long black hair walks up to the white-haired scrapper and begins to treat his wounds. Ah Dragos when are you going to learn how to fight better you can't keep getting into these altercations. Said the girl as she looks at her friend with worry at his recklessness. Ah it's nothing Sonya I only need to be careful that's all said Dragos as Sonya tighten a bandage wrapping on his calf, causing him to slightly wince. Seriously Dragos you act too reckless for your own good. Said Sonya as she finishes patching up his wounds. Before long Dragos stretches to see he is still hurting and slightly turns to his friend. Thanks Sonya I will pay this back when I get a chance. But I gotta go. I need to go help plow the field of my employer said Dragos as his friend looks at him with worry. Be careful Dragos don't overwork yourself, said Sonya as she sees Dragos run off towards the farm. As Dragos walks off his two attackers looks at Sonya with malicious intent. Dragos is helping at the farm plowing the field with the oxen. He had explained to his boss that he was attacked by his rivals. The farmer understood his tardiness due to how his rival attacks many of his hands every day on the market with his hired thugs. Dragos goes into the city to find a side of horror. Hanged above the alleyway he sees his childhood friend Sonya mutilated beyond belief. Two men help Dragos get Sonya's form down. Sonya I don't know how long, but I will avenge you, said Dragos shifting from emotional to vengeful, while hugging his friend's dead form. As he sees the men who attacked him before mock him and his dead friend. They soon run away when he tries to chase them. Dragos goes towards a gymnasium weeks after Sonya's funeral. There he sees many men training in the art of fighting. The lead trainer looks at Dragos and walks over to him. Welcome young man, do you seek training? Asked the aged man. I only seek what I tell you I seek said Dragos letting his impatience get the better of him. You think you can come in here and command me do you, said the aged old man as he looks at the young man in question. Yes I know I can beat you said Dragos who seems overly confident. Then follow me then boy to the wrestling pit said the old man as he leads the way with Dragos behind him. The two stand in the mid of the wrestling pit. Okay boy if you can knock me to the ground, I will teach you whatever, but if not, I will train you to the ground in preparation for the insult. Said the old man. Dragos and the old man get into a fierce battle of wills. While Dragos is an excellent prodigy of a fighter in his own right is unable to best the veteran grappler as he is slammed multiple times to the ground. Dragos, while exceptionally enduring for his age he remembers that the old man isn't his enemy, raises his pinky up. I yield you have bested me old one said Dragos as he looks at the man in question. Well at least you have been humbled. Humility is your first of many lessons said the old man as he helps Dragos to his feet. 
Thank you old man I have been a fool with my behavior toward you said Dragos, as he bows in respect at being humbled by the old man in question. It is no problem I am Romulus head grappling master of this gymnasium said Romulus as he looks at the young man in question. I am Dragos introduce Dragos as he looks at the man with respect. Well Dragos I see a determination in you, one that is a fiery vengeance. I will arm you with the skills necessary for what you must do, but I want you to give it your all in training here, said Romulus as Dragos nods his head in understanding. For the next several years Dragos is trained in the art of grappling. Learning every hold, every pin, take down and slam. Dragos learned how to truly fight from Romulus. Showing him that while his street fighting skills are excellent they are raw and unrefined. Dragos for his part had trained night and day every day of those years in turning himself into a true fighting athlete. Dragos can be seen plowing the field in the ox's place. He had developed superhuman strength through the training and diet, due in part of his already exceptional endurance, allowing him to push harder. As he finishes plowing the field he sees the two men who killed Sonya harassing his employer. Dropping the plow Dragos runs towards their location with rage in his eyes. Dragos leaps at them, beating them within an inch of their lives for their past actions. Dragos looking at the beaten forms of the men. Seeing them beaten by his hands is trying to make a decision on killing them or spare them. He chooses to spare them. Thinking not what Sonya would have wanted for him. He helps his employer take his produce into market to sell. As he is doing this he hears a town crier. The Red Empire has declared war the army is looking for new recruits in a special fighting unit. Said the city crier as Dragos, feeling deeply patriotic, goes to join the army to serve his country. The next several months focused on training him and his comrades in military arts to greatly improve their already formidable fighting abilities. During this time, he met many friends and found love in a girl with close resemblance to Sonya as he fights many brutal battles against the Red Empire. At the moment Dragos and his unit are deep behind enemy lines as a skirmisher unit known as the Iron Praetorians. He's practicing with a man of near similar build in base camp come on Constantine, you need to make use of your reflexes and leverage, don't rely on your skills you learned raw from the street on the battlefield, said Dragos to Constantine as he grapples with him. Come on Dragos everyone knows there are no rules on the battlefield, and Constantine never got to finish as Dragos hip tossed him when he tried to throw a missed punch. Through the battlefield has no rule, but that doesn't mean your fighting technique shouldn't suffer from the lack of refinement. Said Dragos as he helps up his friend. Dragos hears the rally horn blow signaling to gather all soldiers. All soldiers gather to the center to meet their commander, a man of seasoned years. Men, we are to attack the left flank of the enemy force. The scouts have discovered a good position to attack with our javelins, we could easily reduce the numbers of the enemy force. So get your weapons and gear ready and be prepared for combat tomorrow said the commander as the troops get ready for combat. Dragos gets his weapons and gear. Dragos gets his sling, sword, javelin, and armor, setting them where he can get to them. Hey Dragos, I was meaning to ask how you learned how to grapple like that asked Constantine. Well Constantine, it was by an old but skilled grappler named Romulus from my home for Pelios, he taught me grappling and bare-handed fighting, after my friend named Sonya was killed by some thugs. I went to get into fighting shape, but found something important on how to actually be a skilled fighter, explained Dragos as he and Constantine go to sleep for tomorrow's battle. Dragos and his comrades the next day attacks the enemy force with their javelins and slings, slaining many enemy troops, when some of the troops begins to attack. Dragos and some of the Iron Praetorians engage in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. Dragos kills 35 men with either his sword or bare hands. Soon more of the troops of the left flank begin to fight with Dragos leading the fierce charge into battle. Fighting on both flanks of the battlefield becomes chaotic by the minute. Soon the force of Red Imperialists are forced to retreat due to the seemingly superhuman strength of Dragos. The battle is won and a legend is only just beginning. Spirit walk end. Naruto turns to the last page of the passage. He sees a woman with long black hair and an outfit calling back to Tentons. She is a fierce female martial artist and combat mystic of incredible skill and mystical aptitude. Her name is Mei, the dragon mistress of the Kaishin dynasty. Spirit walk. The young Mei can be seen getting dressed after her martial arts tournament. She is walking home she is suddenly attacked by a group of bandits. Mei fights as best as she could, but is overwhelmed by the bandit's own mystical martial abilities. Time to die bitch, but before we kill you, we're going to have some fun with you, said one of the bandits as he rips her shirt and pants. The men throw her down to the ground as they get ready to rape her. Before they could, a man leaping out of nowhere attacks them using his own martial skills and savagely defeats Mei's attackers using mystics and martial skills that she has never seen before. Mei looks around to see that the man took them apart in a matter of three minutes. Are you alright ma'am asked the man in question. Yes I am alright the only thing they took was my pride. Said Mei as she looks at her savior. 
I am off we may meet again said the man in question as he disappears. Wait, I didn't get your name asked Mei as she looks at her savior before he runs away. Call me Lei Kung revealed Lei Kung as he disappears in the forest. Mei thinks to herself that her training is incomplete. While she is skilled in the Tristar Fist, none of her studies in the form focused on real-world combat. Mei from that day on decides to refocus her training to overcome this lapse in martial focus and fighting tactics. As for most of her training, she is a tournament fighter not an overall martial artist and combat mystic. She goes home and tells her folks what happened and what she is going to do. She packs her things and goes towards her sensei's dojo. For the next three months Mary trains in the Tristar Fist training and the more combative skills to best round out her skills as a skilled fighter. Learning more street-orientated tactics and mystics while also training for the next tournament. On the day of the next tournament of martial arts, May's improved fighting ability and mystical prowess shows her dominating much of the competition, with her skills being superior to most of her opponents. She is however defeated by ring out only against some of the past champions. May after showering and getting dressed walks towards her home. But she is soon set upon by bandits. But the bandits don't know that she isn't a fearful sheep, but a predator. As she ferociously takes apart the men with her newly developed fighting skills. She manages to knock out the last man with a hard punch to his ribcage and solar plexus. A mysterious vigilante Lei Kung leaps out of nowhere. Impressively and skillfully done madam. Said Lei Kung as he disappears. My wonder who he is truly thought Mei as she walks home a new woman. Spirit walk end. Naruto is in thought when he looks at these spirit walks, each one showing where each warrior had to go back to basics in martial combat or energy manipulation or both. Back to basics it is then. Maybe it would be best to relearn how to use chakra and what I had just learned. Thought Naruto as he takes a nap for the long trip ahead. Back with the Konoha 11. The Konoha 12 now 11 is traveling to Suna for the Chunin exams, they individually focus on what the challenges lie ahead with the Chunin exams. Hinata for her part is more focused, her training in kickboxing and aerobics had improved her gentle fist technique, entirely different than what the elders could comprehend, especially when she trained under the Kintaro of Karate himself. Flashback two days earlier in Konoha. Hinata can be seen sparring with Tenma Torikin in a fast-paced sparring session. Tenma holds back slightly against the Hyuga Eris, while teaching her the Sabaki method of Ashihara Kaken. Allowing her to combine defense and offense into one. Excellent Hanada, your skill has improved greatly since we started these last two years, said Tenma, as he dodges a sidekick from Hanada and counters with a low kick, knocking her to the ground. Hanada recovers from said kick soon and throws a rising elbow that catches Tenma off guard. Thank you sensei. It's really great to hear such praise coming from you. I only seek to keep up with my love answered Hinata as she dodges a roundhouse kick from Tenma. So sensei I heard that you have been seeing Lady Tsunade lately, how the date was between you two asked Hinata as Tenma blushes at being found out by Hinata as he and Tsunade started dating during the past two years. The and Tsunade had hit it off quite well despite Jureya trying to interrupt their dates many times, resulting with him getting an ass beating of a lifetime from both of them on each date that greatly got them closer. Well I would say marvelous said Tenma as they continue to spar. Flashback ended. Hinata had also been keeping her distance from Kiba, as he has made many unwanted advances towards her. Shino and Akamaru had been trying to keep Kiba on a tight leash from Hinata. Thankfully it's working it's like magic. Back in Konoha. Raiden is in bed with the game Jutsu Mistress Kurinai, after having many drinks with each other and their views on life and equality. The two came back to Kurinai's house where things to a turn for the best of both of them. A night of passion that left both unconscious and in each other's arms. Raiden is the first one up as he looks at Kurinai who is stirred away back Kamimro's movement. So that night wasn't a dream was it asked Kurinai as she looks at Kamimro who looks back at her. No it was only the beginning said Raiden as he looks at Kurinai with longing and hope as he locks lips with her. They begin to get dressed for their jobs in the village. Elsewhere in Konoha. Ryakami is in the forest of death, honing his battle skills against the forest's deadly predators. He has felt Naruto's increase in power in some fashion unexplained but unique to him. He fell stronger and faster than ever before. He thinks my partner has found a great power within himself. I only wonder how the ninja world will react to it. Thought Ryakami as he goes to find worthy opponents. Back with Naruto. Naruto in the land of ancestors goes into a library getting on the subject of practices of spiritual energy. Naruto also found books on rudimentary fighting arts, such as Kwan Fa, boxing, Kumi Uechi and tea. As well as books on basic weapons handling. Naruto on the train ride back towards the elementals. Looking through the books to see everything that his arts have but is lacking in. Naruto for his part had done mental training in each skill from his tojutsu, weapons handling to his channeling and manipulation of Kai, Ongen and Chakra, and every one of them, and practicing them on top of the train for the next following days. 
When he soon returns to the elementals, he feels his body reacting with his chakra becoming more powerful than what he's expecting. As his body starts to have a slight metamorphosis getting slightly taller with more mental clarity. Naruto after traveling 300 miles away from the train station stops in a secluded area and starts to fall into a trance-like state. In the mindscape. Naruto finds himself walking in the hallway of a well-kept castle. He follows the red lines to find who or what might have given him the sensation of coming into his mindscape. He soon discovers the reason in the form of a woman with red auburn hair and a deep lavender kimono that shows off her curvaceous and athletic form. Ah so my jailer has shown up to visit again, said QB as she looks at her jailer once more noticing that he is far different, stronger than before it seems to her and surrounded by energy that easily blocks her from influencing him in any way. Well, isn't this a surprise the king of the tailed beasts is really a queen. So do I have a reason why you brought me into this part of the mindscape QB asked Naruto curious of the QB no Kitsune. Oh well it's to ask about how you went from a lucky gaki to this champion. Asked QB as he looks at Naruto with interest. Well if you must know I had been training and improving my skills and ability as a ninja after I discovered Jiraiya of the Sanin, along with Hiruzen Saratobi and Kakashi Hataki being no good sons of bitches. As well as finding the ultimate training manual that would help me as both a ninja and a warrior called the Warrior Regeneration Method. Learning multiple styles of combat from not only this world but also from other realms. I just came back from the chakraless countries of ancestor and ancients and I'm ready to kick ass. Explained Naruto as QB is shocked at how much she had just missed while sleeping. QB then senses the seal has returned most of her chakra due to sealing array being more. Let me guess your chakra is returning to you at a faster rate than expected. Said Naruto as he looks at the humanized tailed beast in question. Yeah but more than that how did you overcome your darkness, I can sense your dark half's power and sense a great power from you I have never sensed before said QB as she looks at Naruto in question. I have come to be in harmony with my darkness. I don't reject it as most would I learn to live with it, said Naruto as QB looks at her jailer with awe and wonder. Well ask me this QB why do I feel not malice, but balance within you ask Naruto as QB blushes as she looks at him fidgeting a little. Well, it's because Naruto-kun I had be purified by the energy you emitted after your arrival back into the elementals. Answered QB as Naruto caught the kun suffix. Oh I didn't know I won the heart of the strongest tailed beast in the elemental nations. Said Naruto as he looks in on the tailed beast as he looks at the beautiful humanoid Biju. Well it's just that I had started to feel something for you when your changes started to manifest answered QB a little embarrassed. Well it would be better to know each other on more equal circumstances, said Naruto as he moved to remove QB's collar to see a hand stop him belonging to his father with his mother right next to him. Hello mother hello father said Naruto as he smiles at the two shocking them both at his appearance. Naruto what happened to you asked Minato, curious of his son's appearance while his mother is curious of something else entirely, notably his tattoo with the wolf and dragon. Well it's a long story so I will tell you said Naruto as he begins to explain to the remnants of his parents of his treatment in the village and how Kakashi and Jiraiya along with the elder toads, stabbing him and them in the back. Naruto explains the warrior regeneration method and how he has improved for the last two years of his training, along with finding Minato's father, surviving combat against Rajinkan the Brute and defeating Devil's Tower's warriors. Kishina, Minato and most of all QB had all been amazed by these details of his training and his combat prowess. QB had been asleep for most of her time in Naruto during those events. As remarkable that is that doesn't explain why you were about to unseal the QB said Minato as he looks at Naruto in question. Well it's pretty much due to me becoming attracted to Naruto. Said QB as Minato and Kishina looks at QB with surprise as she continues. Well it's because I have been seeing how Naruto's training in the method had changed the mindscape. It also showed more when I couldn't influence his chakra, as if he is alpha-like which brings me to my next question. Naruto my chakra is blocked from you, but you look more primal like your state when you tap into my chakra only fiercer. How is this possible? Asked QB knowing she has no chakra flowing into the seal. It might be due to this answered Naruto as he channel his animal spirit's power. QB looks at Naruto with awe as she senses a great strength. This is what I learned from the North Star tribe and ancestors country. It's the power of my animal spirit, the dire wolf. It grants me enhanced qualities of strength, speed, agility, healing and endurance, higher than normal Yuzumaki, while also giving me enhanced senses that are on par with some of the Inuzuka clan's strongest trackers. Explained Naruto as Kashina looks at Naruto with awe as she touches the deep bold and whisker marks. I was going to get to know QB by her character with a simple talk. Well yes I'm aware that QB could kill me at any point, but she would be battling someone who knows the use of Ongan not just Chakra. A battle which would leave permanent scars that will stay with her. Said Naruto as he looks at his parents. Minato about to objects until Kishina looks at Minato. 
gesturing to have faith in their son and his endless compassion. My son I have doubts, but I know you will do the right thing. Said Minato as he and Kashina begins to disappear. Good luck Sachi and be sure you give me lots of grandchildren, said Kashina in an extravagant tone as she and her husband disappear. Naruto goes to release the seal. Outside of the mindscape. Naruto awakens to see the QB coming outside of the seal and the seal disappearing. She stands not as a towering biju, but as an Amazon-like woman. So QB tell me about yourself and your past ask Naruto as QB begins to tell him about herself. She also gives out that she finds him as a definite mate and lover. Saying while in the past she would take this chance to kill him. But from what she had experienced from Naruto's changing mindscape is something that turned her around on the prospect of doing so due to her starting to experience an influx of positive emotions instead of the negative she's always been feeling in Kanoha from him. Naruto for his part is in awe from not only her interest in him as a lover, but also her history meeting the Sage of Six Paths. Well QB I don't know what happens next, but let's take things in the right direction said Naruto as he looks at the fierce looking humanoid Biju. Sure thing Naruto-kun, but you can call me Kurama said Kurama, as she looks at a smiling Naruto the two travel towards an old hideout of the Ikemichi clan. As they travel Naruto and Kurama senses a battle happening near the border of river country. Naruto goes towards it to see a girl with mint green hair and tan skin on the ground beaten with two men in cloaks with red clouds. Naruto draws out his bow and arrow aiming for one who has gray hair. In the point of view of the girl in question. The girl is heavily injured and hurt from the attack on her person. Before any of them could get closer to her form, Haydn is hit in the chest by an arrow. You creeps won't be taking that girl with you said Naruto as he leaps over near Fu with a shadow clone, picking her up. Anvil of Chrome theme. So the fucking nine tails Jinchuriki is back looking like a prince charming who went to boot camp. Said Haydn as he pulls the arrow from his chest. So you jokers are the zombie duo I must say I thought you would be taller and prettier, said Naruto as the duo snarls at the remark. I'll kill you. You run said Haydn as Kakazu stops him. We need him alive for the biju said Kakazu as he gets into his stance. Are you girls going to fight or are you going to stand there playing with yourselves? Said Naruto as Haydn rushes at Naruto. Soon a skirmish between the trio happens. Naruto is giving the duo a battle using his skill in the Great Sky Dragon Fist in the battle, catching them unawares of this style of fighting, as he uses his Ongan in in the fight, showcasing his mastery of the White Falcon form, using more deceptive tactics to outmaneuver and outfight the zombie duo. Naruto does take some damage even Haydn trying to use his Jashinist ritual, only for it to backfire when Naruto throws an impact bomb at him, sending him flying outside of his circle. Kakazu casts out a wind jutsu only for it to be sent back at him with a vengeance, courtesy of his deflection technique Naruto learned from Lord Hoth that he enhanced with his chakra. Naruto decides to end the fight by throwing an explosive kunai at Kakazu's that sends him flying off a nearby cliff into a running river, greatly injuring him and damaging a heart in the process. Haydn gets set on fire by Naruto throwing an incendiary that he learned from the land of ancestors. Haydn runs off the same cliff into the same river. The mend. That's that for now at least said Naruto as he goes where Fu and Kurama is. Fu is being treated of her injuries by Kurama in small part of her knowledge of Mito Uzumaki's healing techniques. Are you alright asked Naruto as he looks at the conscious Fu. Yes I'm fine, but who are you asked the girl, curious and cautious of Naruto and Kurama. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Torokin, answered Naruto as she looks at him with surprise. I am Fu no last name of Takigakur answered Fu, as Naruto looks in her eyes to see she is what he once was a Jinchuriki. So you are what I used to be a Jinchuriki said Naruto shocking Fu as she looks at him. What number were you asked Fu as she gets to her feet. He was number 9 answered Kurama as she shows her ears and 9 tails Fu, shocking her. Well it was nice to meet you Fu, but I need to get back to my training trip, said Naruto, as he and Kurama gets ready for the remaining year of training. Wait said Fu stopping the two. Yes said Naruto as he turns towards Fu. Could you take me with you? You took those guys apart and I want to learn what you learned to defend myself asked Fu with her reason. Naruto thinking about what the Akatsuki would do to Fu if they caught her. Sure but you need to focus and pay attention to what I would teach you. Said Naruto as Fu nods in agreement. Let's move said Kurama as she, Naruto and Fu move towards the abandoned Akamichi safe house. On the river bank. The Kazu and Haiden licks their wounds from the fight that Naruto gave them. What the hell was that I have never fought a Tejutsu style using flaming fists before said Haiden, as Kakazu moves around shaking off the massive concussion he had just received from a roundhouse kick from Naruto. No kidding I have never seen anything like that before said Kakazu as he rings out his cloak of water. Come on we have to report to the leader said Kakazu, as he and Haiden travel towards the Akatsuki relay spot nearby. And Storm Country. Five of Storm Country's greatest combatants are each getting ready for the match against one Yuzumaki Torokin. 
One in particular is practicing in a mountain stronghold with remains of defeated warriors on pikes. This warrior being Rajinkin who is practicing his unarmed fighting techniques and skills. Soon Yuzumaki I will test your skill in combat once more after all you are the grandson of my greatest rival. Thought Rajinkin as he continues his physical training. Back with Naruto. Naruto is looking at the book as it releases a Hapuri similar to Hashirama, but different with patterns matching his tattoo in question. Naruto tries it on and seeing it fit well on him. But the front cover of the book is glory. Naruto wondering what the book will show him next. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.